Hey guys, it's me, Shinamini2552 again, and I promised that I'd review these books, but I hadn't hadn't had much time, and I promised I'd review the second and third books of the Night Angel trilogy, so I'll just do it. I'll, I'll just do one right now. I will uh, review Shadow's Edge by Brent Weeks, and... The perfect killer has no identity, even though Kyler has an identity. I just don't understand why that... Well, anyway, that's not a bad thing. I'm just... Um, anyway, this is just a continuation of the last book. Of course, it's a trilogy. It's the second one. It's in the middle. It's um, not as long as the other one, but it's pretty long. Maybe... Uh, couple of pages less. Um, you got new characters, new bad, new villains, you know, bad guys. I still refer to them as bad guys, I don't know why. Um, it says on the back, Kyler Stern has rejected the assassin's life. The God, King's success uh, the God King's successful coup has left Kyler's master Durzo and his best friend Logan dead. He is starting over. New city, new friends, and new profession. But when he learns that Logan might actually be alive and in hiding, Kyler is faced with an agonizing choice. Will he give up the Way of Shadows or forever and live in peace with his new family, or will he risk everything by taking on the ultimate hit? Yep. Pretty awesome. Um, basically, Kyler quits being an assassin or a white boy, which sounds really wrong to me right now. And he... leaves... Scenario or Serenia or whatever the hell it's called. I haven't read this book in a while. I forget what the town's called. But he goes to this other town like Carnivarn or whatever it is. And he basically gets a new life there. He's like a, a different person. And then he learns that his best friend's still alive. Whoa. And so he goes back and he tries to ki uh, save his best friend, Logan, Geyer bring him into power, which doesn't really succeed, not yet anyway. That's a big spoiler alert. And, um, kill the God King, who's, um, basically conquered scenario. He wants to liberate the people. And so, it, I think it had much more action than the first one. Uh, there's a big battle at the end, there's like big giant trolls and ferales, whatever that is. Um, it was a little emotional. I thought I thought it was a great book. Maybe same as that. Uh, uh, I'm weird today. Um, same as the last book. It's all of it's good. Maybe a couple of pages here and there, but it's still pretty good. It's worth reading. I'm sorry I'm zipping through this, but I just frankly don't have the time. I have a lot of studies going on. It's my sophomore year of high school. Back to topic. Um, so anyway, uh, Kyler is a little bit more outgoing, I thought, in this one. He's confident this time that he can do stuff that he wasn't as confident in the first one. Like, he knew he was probably able to kill God King, but in the first one he was scared of fighting Roth. But, you know... I guess it's character development, you know. That's great. The character development in this book is really good. A lot of old characters reprise their roles. Reprise? It's not a movie. Um, a lot of old characters come back, and some have changed for the better, and others have are still the same, pretty much. Like, uh, Aline is still pretty much the same innocent little girl she was, this doll girl. She's, like, still got the scars and stuff, and... I can't really go into too much of this book like last time. It's a very good book. I would recommend picking it up if you've read the first one because who would want to start the series from the middle book and then just flip around? I do that for some books, but those books are usually not like in order. Like the series of unfortunate events, it's basically in one order, one through thirteen. But you could read it in any order technically speaking. Stuff like that. But stuff like trilogy-wise, this book, you only should read it in order. So if you haven't read the first one, pick that up first. Get the... If you want, there's um, a three... It's like a box set of th all three books. 
and you should just you should definitely buy it or you should just check it out at the library it's really good wow I'm running out of things to say okay one of the bad things of this book was that there were more boring scenes and there was a lot more stuff like there was a lot more stuff that kids can't read I'll just leave it at that 15 as I said in the last one 15 should be the maybe 15 16 somewhere around there if you want to read it early by all means I really don't care 15 16 and above this book won't be as awkward, but there are awkward moments that you feel like, what the hell's going on? What the crap? Anyway, phone's ringing, and I'm about done. I can't really divulge more without spoiling all the real plot points. So, I give this book a 9. I don't know, I don't really remember what I gave Way of Shadows, but I give this book a 9. And I will definitely review Beyond the Shadows when I can. I'm sorry I zipped through this one. I might go into more depth with Beyond the Shadows because it was a bigger book. It was tying up all the loose ends. But this is not a review about Beyond the Shadows. It was Shadow's Edge. Pick it up. It's a good book. I give it a 9. And I'll see you guys next time.